Uh, thank you for joining us for the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs. Like magic, we're in a new room. And like magic, it's all a little after 3.01 on this <laughs> Friday, February 9th in room 225. Uh, this hearing is being streamed live on uh, YouTube, and if for whatever reason we have any kind of technical difficulties, uh, we will post notice as to when we will reconvene. Uh, because there's so much testimony on, on uh, today's uh, agenda for the various bills, I'm going to ask that we limit everyone's testimony uh, to one minute, please. We are going to just jump right in to Senate Bill 2512 relating to emergency management powers. Louis Salaberry from the Department of Budget and Finance. Chair, good afternoon. Uh, uh, the department will stand on for a moment. Thank you, Louis. James Barros from Haima has. Oh, hi. Sir, we're here for Haima uh, to stand in uh, opposition to uh, 45. Thank you, Mr. Barros. Members, any questions for Mr. Barros or Mr. Salaberry? Okay. Thank you both. <laughs> Next measure is Senate Bill 2781, relating to disaster services. Kathy Betts from TIHER, oh, excuse me, not TIHER, Department of Human Services, has submitted commentary. Off, I'm sorry, but off, Afarik Ramburang, Office of Language Access, I'm so sorry for Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and Member. Uh, Afirak Bamruan, Executive Director for the Office of Language Access. We stand on our written testimony, offering comment, and available for any questions from the mayor. Thank you, Chair. Thanks for joining us. John Lewin from the State Planning and Development Agency has submitted testimony in support. Stephanie Villa Lobos from Roots Reborn has submitted testimony in support. Amy Aguayani or Matt McMammon. McMahon, co-chairs of the Civil Rights Friends. Pat McMahon, I'm in Hawaii Friends of Civil Rights. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair. Um, I just want to, you have my written testimony, I just want to point out um, one thing. Um, there's a difference between Hawaii's state language access law and federal requirements for HIEMA. So the Stafford Act, Section 308, has very specific requirements in disaster. So if you receive FEMA funding, um, you are required to identify ahead of time LEP populations, incorporate those populations into your disaster management plans, ensure that populations can access disaster relief information, and develop and maintain a database, and by implication, MOUs, with interpreters and translators. In the wake of the Maui uh, wildfire, uh, Haima unfortunately failed to serve in this capacity. The community um, rose to the occasion and um, came together and volunteer interpreters and volunteer and translators um, provided critical vital information for um, some uh, approximately 30% of Lahaina residents who could possibly be limited English proficient. It's a, um, the next disaster is just waiting to happen. They need to take care of this now. We're asking um, that um, they hire and you um, uh, uh, place a language access coordinator to do this job. It's not just a state language access plan. It's very complicated. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Matthew Johnson from Pacific Gateway Center has submitted testimony in support. Karina Wong from Pacific Gateway Center also in support. Barbara Tom from the Waipahu Safe Haven Immigrant Migrant Resource Center has submitted testimony in support. Ethan Higa also from Pacific Gateway in support. Maria Rola Jay from the Hawaii Coalition of Immigrant Rights. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. My name is Maria Rauihai with the Hawaii Coalition for Immigrant Rights. We strongly support SB 2781, and I want to emphasize a few points from our testimony. So after the Maui wildfire, we mobilized and convened a meeting with 80% or 80 participants attending, representing 30 organizations on how to assist our immigrant, migrant, and limited English profession residents and survivors. We identified language barrier as one of, if not the main issue for our community 
This is what we heard then. This is what we heard when attending resource fairs in Maui. This is what we heard from the people themselves. This is what I heard from my own family in Lahaina who was severely affected. And this is what we will continually hear after every disaster if we do not have a language access coordinator within Haima who would implement a systemic, proactive, and um, coordinated approach. And I know that my time is up, but I just want to say that we called Haima this afternoon and asked for an in-person meeting. We're still waiting for a response, but we are really willing and would love to um, work with them on this. So thank you so much for allowing me to testify. Thank you, Maria. I'll actually help you out. James Barris from Haima. <laughs> <laughs> he was here. I think he might be outside. <laughs> hey, welcome. Uh, we stand in opposition of this bill, sir. Uh, uh, 2781, and we're working with the Office of Language Services, uh, and that's in our testimony. Okay, and just as a, a side note, you heard uh, from Maria just a moment ago. She'd be happy to talk a story with you after this here. Yes, sir. Okay, um, members, I've a lot of a lot of individuals in, in support of this measure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 2781? Okay, members, any questions? If not, we're going to move on to the next measure, Senate Bill 2808, relating to statewide fire helicopters. First of our testifiers list, we have uh, Jay Butai from the Department of Labor. Uh, great. Aloha Friday, uh, Chair Wakai, Vice Chair Elefante, and committee members. Uh, Jay Butai for Department of Labor and Industrial Relations. Uh, we stand on our testimony. Uh, Providing comments. Thank you. Thank you, Don Chang from DLNR. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Michael Walker. I'm the statewide fire protection forester for Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Forestry and Wildlife. We stand on our written testimony and available for questions. In support. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. Jack Riel from the AG's office. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, um, I'm Deputy Attorney General Jack Relf, here to provide some comments on Senate Bill 2808. The Department of the Attorney General has set forth more fully um, some issues we've identified that could uh, pose legal challenges in our written testimony. But briefly, the bill could face legal challenges because the title, which is relating to fire helicopters or statewide fire helicopters, um, is uh, narrower than certain aspects of the bill when it talks about a statewide firefighting program or firefighting aircraft. Uh, second, the bill could create confusion as to who has jurisdiction over the firefighting helicopters because of the undefined use of the term department on page six. Uh, our written testimony has provided some suggestions to address these issues, and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Uh, the Department of Health has submitted. Oh, hi. Good afternoon, and Kung Gi Fat Choi, uh, Lauren Kim, a DOH Policy and Planning Officer. Uh, the department will stand on its testimony, offering comments, noting that we, uh, the department, is supporting an administrative bill that looks at a statewide air ambulance medical helicopter program. So we just wanted the committee to be aware that there are more than one conversation on a statewide uh, rotary aircraft program in play, um, just again, for your awareness. Thank you, and I'm available for questions. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kim. Pamela Tumpap from the Maui Chamber of Commerce has submitted testimony in support. James Alberts from Hawaiian Electric. Well, uh, Chair, Jim Alberts, Hawaiian Electric, we stand on our written testimony with Thank you, Mr. Alberts. Michael Rice, an individual has, might be joining us. Oh, there you are. Welcome, Michael. Hello, um, again, Michael Rice. Uh, I'd just like to reiterate, my testimony, it sounds like uh, quite a few others agree with me that the wording should be changed from helicopter to aircraft just because that would open up uh, more options for the fire marshal or whoever is in charge of this program. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned in my, test, in my written testimony, some aircraft can have a much greater capacity for spreading water, uh, spraying water or whatever, they're going to be spraying over larger distances faster. So uh, essentially we could have like a, an aircraft station on Oahu and be able to cover Molokai, Kauai, you know, basically whoever needs it quickly and they can move a, quite a bit more faster than air, in this helicopters alone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 2808? <clears throat> Members, any questions? 
Uh, Jack from the AG's office. Sure. So I understand you, your concern about the title, and this title is very narrow with uh, regard to helicopters. Um, but I do agree with some of the testimony about we should expand it to other like fixed winged aircrafts, but even more so, that wouldn't fit under the statewide fire helicopters here. Um, we have a short form bill uh, relating to public safety. If we dump this language plus include fixed wing aircraft, do you think that that would work? Uh, into the short form bill that yeah. presently doesn't have a title. I don't have an issue, I uh, see an issue with that presently, uh, Chair, but we could uh, certainly get back to the, the committee with uh, written comments on that. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. We are going to move on to our next bill, which is Senate Bill 2924, relating to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. First in our testifiers list is Lauren Zerbel from the Food Industry Association has submitted testimony in support. Uh, Mr. Barrows, from Paiva. Hello, Chair, committee members. Oh, we stand uh, in support of 2924, uh, a distribution hub uh, across somewhere across the, the state. So. Thank you, Mr. Barrows. Sure. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 2924? If not, members, any questions? Okay. We're going to move on to the next measure then. That is Senate Bill 3041 relating to law enforcement. First in our list is uh, Department of Attorney General, Adriana Takawa. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee, Deputy Attorney General, the Department of the Attorney General. The state stands on its written testimony in support of this bill. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Adrian. Michael Vincent from DLE. Good afternoon, Chair, Kyle, Vice Chair, Al Farmer, members of the committee. The uh, Department of Law Enforcement stands on its testimony and support. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Cavaco from Shopo has submitted testimony opposition. Carrie Ann Shirota from ACLU, also in opposition. Josh Parker from the Policing Project of New York has submitted testimony in opposition. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3041? Members, any questions? Okay, we're gonna move right along to the next measure, which is Senate Bill 3068, making appropriations for wildlife recovery. On our testifiers list, we have Louis Solidarier from Budget and Finance. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Senator. Uh, Louis Oliveri from the Department of Budget and Finance. Uh, what you have in front of you right now is a proposal that was submitted by the governor, which was essentially a companion bill to the budget bill, which highlighted all of the requests that we made related to the Lahaina wildfires. Uh, we are asking for the bill to be amended to basically turn it into an emergency appropriation bill for fiscal year 24. What we are finding right now is that a significant number of expenses are starting to be incurred and encumbered in FY24. So we would need a vehicle uh, as an emergency appropriation in order to make those uh, obligations in the current fiscal year. So be happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding the issue, but uh, appreciate your consideration for the proposed amendments. Sure, thanks for being here, Louis. James Barros from Haima. <laughs> Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee. Uh, we stand in support of uh, Senate Bill 3060. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Stacey Aldrich from the library, public library system, has submitted testimony support. Dean Minakami from the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation has submitted testimony support. Oh, hi, welcome. Thank you, Chair, Vice <coughs> Chair, and Senator. HHPC um, stands in support of um, Holly Osumi, Chief Financial Officer, who stands in support of this bill. We just wanted to identify that there may be a correction that's needed in the classification. Yep, got that. Thank you, Holly. Alice Lee from the Maui County Council has submitted testimony in support. Chris Caulfield from the Democratic Party of Hawaii also in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3068? If not, members, any questions? We're going to move on to the next measure, that being Senate Bill 3072, 
relating to emergency management. Louis Salaveria from the Department of Budget and Finance. The chair of the department will stand on his written testimony and strong support. Thank you. Uh, James Barrows from Haima. Sir, Haima stands on its written testimony. Thank you, James. Uh, that's all I have for testifiers. Is there anyone else in the room or online wanting to testify on Senate Bill 3072? Members, any questions? Okay, we are zipping along to next. Uh, our next bill is Senate Bill 3085. And this is relating to the Hawaii National Guard. Kenneth Hara from the Department of Defense. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Brigadier General Walter Ross, Director of Joint Staff. We stand in support of our written testimony and support of this bill. Thank you, Chairman Ross. Colonel Tyson Tahara from the Hawaii Army National Guard has submitted to the testimony and support. Richard Namoka from the 154th Security Force Squadron has submitted testimony and support. Kevin Horton from the Hawaii National Guard Association, also in support. Members, I have about seven individuals all in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3085? Members, questions? We'll move on to the next measure then. That is Senate Bill 3096, relating to wildfire risk mitigation. First on our testifiers list is uh, Blake Oshiro, or someone from the Office of the Governor. Has submitted testimony in support. Louis Salaveria from Budget and Finance. Chair, the department will stand on its written comments. Uh, we are working with uh, the Attorney General's office in order to tighten up the language of the Governor's securitization bill. So I think general we support the extent that we are working with. Thank you, Louis. Randall Nishiyama from the Attorney General's office. Good afternoon. Uh, Randall Nishiyama for the Department of the Attorney General. Given the complex nature of securitization, we've asked our, the state's bond counsel, Craig Scully, to review the bill. We hope to have language uh, outlining the statutory framework for the securitization to present to the committee by Monday. Thank you. We stand ready to answer your question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Nishiyama. Michael Angelo from DCCA. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, my name is Mike Angelo, I'm the Executive Director of the Business Consumer Advocacy. We stand on our written testimony for the questions. Uh, I saw Blake Oshiro come in. Do you want to battle me? <laughs> who, has, who has a nice Aloha shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, Blake Oshiro, Senior Advisor for the Governor. Uh, we stand on our written testimony and strong support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Blake. Uh, Mark Lick from the State Energy Office has submitted testimony in support. Leo Asuncion from the PUC. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. My name is Grace Bell from the PUC. We will stand on our written testimony in support of this measure and answer any questions that have. Thank you, Grace. Micah Munikata from Ulupono has submitted testimony in support. Jim Alberts from Hiko. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Jim Alberts, testifying on behalf of Hawaiian Electric. We stand on our written testimony with a request for amendments. I do have one change that I would like to ask for your consideration. We recently completed our amendments for the securitization part of this bill. So if we may submit those at the end of the hearing today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alberts. Kika Bukowski from IBEW. Thank you. David Bisson from the Kauai Island Utility Corporation might be joining us via Zoom. Aloha, good afternoon. Uh, this is Beth Amaro for KIUC, appearing on behalf of David Bissell. Uh, we uh, have submitted testimony and a possible amendment. Uh, basically, KAUC would not utilize securitized bonds to fund uh, this implementation, but rather our existing low-cost sources of capital, such as our U.S. loan funds. So we're requesting the ability to recover those costs via a dedicated 
Sheriff Ryder and we've suggested some language there in our testimony. We appreciate your consideration and are happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. And we have uh, Henry Curtis from Life of the Land. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, and members. Henry Curtis, Executive Director of Life of the Land. We feel that it's very important this bill passes. We have some amendments. It's very important that everybody is able to participate fully in this. We need a docket open on this. And under Chapter 269-9, the PUC is authorized to investigate and open a docket on deaths related to utilities. Uh, that should have been done a long time ago. In conjunction with this bill, it will help. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curtis. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3096? Apologies, Chair. I think I said great comments from uh, Fantastic. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to comment on 3096? Members, any questions? Um, we're going to move on to the next measure that is Senate Bill 3198 relating to Civil Air Patrol. We have one testifier that is Colonel Stacy Araguchi from the Civil Air Patrol. Good afternoon, Chair and uh, committee members. My name is Colonel Stacy Haraguchi, Wing Commander, Hawaii Civil Air Patrol. Uh, we support the bill with amendment as currently worded. The bill prevents us from using the funding for anything beyond uh, actual services provided, which means I cannot use this for overhead, such as uh, utilities, internet, or other essential uh, capabilities. It also means I'm not allowed to use it for critical uh, equipment, such as interoperability radios with county fire, county police departments, or anything along those lines, which make it, makes it very difficult for us to help counties or states to execute search and rescue or disaster related events. Uh, so again, I stand on the testimony along with the, uh, I'm sorry, the written testimony with amendment. Thank you, Colonel Haraguchi. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3198? If not, members, any questions? Yes, Senator Obama. A question for Colonel Haraguchi. Yes, yes if you can come back up, please. Uh, would the appropriations include in the event if communities don't have an operable emergency siren that Civil Air Patrol would be able to inform residents um, of warnings? Yes. So we do have several aircraft with airborne loudspeakers. We did use it during the Maui fires. After the fires, unfortunately, on the day of the fire, it was too windy for us to fly. On subsequent days, we were able to use the loudspeaker system to notify people where they could find food, wa water, and uh, other uh, emergency response capability. So yes, that is a statewide capability for okay. us. Great. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you, Chair. Nope, you're welcome. Any other questions? Okay. We're going to move on to the next measure. That is Senate Bill 3259 relating to tort liability. On our testifiers list, we have Don Chang from DLNR. Has submitted testimony in support. Randy Pereira from HGEA has submitted uh, testimony in support. Evan Owen from the Hawaii Association for Justice. Chair, we found out to testify on this issue. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3259? Angela Melody Young testifying uh, um, in strong support. On behalf of CARES, a grassroots. So Act 170 from 2022 provided limit liability protections for county lifeguards, providing services at state beach parks or in the ocean, except in cases of gross negligence or wanton acts or omissions. Wanton meaning a deliberate, cruel, provoked, violent action. So um, this is to protect lifeguards in case something were to happen, right, with limited liability protections. And that act from 2002 was repealed and the limited protections were canceled. And the purpose of this measure before us today is to permanently provide protections previously afforded to county lifeguards. And based on the statutory 
um, rationale that there should be tort liability, right? So tort laws governs the rights of victims to pursue legal claims against tort feasors. When a victim is harmed or suffers damage, the victim can pursue a claim in civil court under tort laws. And therefore we are in support. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to testify on Senate Bill 3259? If not, we're going to move on to the last measure oh. on this agenda. That is Senate Bill. I, oh. I did have a question, though. Oh, sorry. For Thank Angela? You. Oh, for Evan. Oh, okay. If you have the statistics, are you aware of any uptick in litigation or, or uh, litigation where the counties are losing? No, we have, uh, you know, to our knowledge, we haven't heard of any uh, case in which a lifeguard has been found personally liable or, or a county has been found personally liable in this for, you know, the acts of a lifeguard um, in, in a negligence sense. So, no, we, we don't have, we, or we're not aware of any case not at this aware time. Of any. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Right. You're welcome. Anyone else with questions on 3259? Okay. We're going to move on to the last measure on this agenda that's Senate Bill 3283. Relating to the Hawaii Correctional System Oversight Commission. Put me on the screen. Oh, do we have anybody on Zoom? Sorry if I skipped over you on a previous measure. IT. Oh, sorry. I'm just for the last for the last one. Okay, that's thirty-two eighty-three. Is that correct? I'm not. I'm not too sure. Speaking, but um, I will call you. And when I call your name, I'm sure we're going to see you. Um, so we're going to start with Haley Cheng, Assistant Public Defender, has submitted testimony in opposition. Uh, members, again, we're on Senate Bill 3283. Uh, Mark Patterson from the Hawaii Correctional System Oversight Commission. Good afternoon, Chair, uh, members of the committee. Mark Patterson, uh, Chair of the Hawaii Correctional System Oversight Commission. Um, we staunchly oppose Senate Bill 3283 and really uh, stand on the testimony that we submitted. I really want to just say real, real quick, that's in 40 seconds. So I have on my 34th year working in the correctional system here in Hawaii. Yeah, I have been um, commanded at least a thousand correctional officers in my career. And I am the senior active warden in the state of Hawaii at this time. So there has been a lot of darkness in our system in those 30 years, always looking for who is going to come and be the savior for the issues at hand on the ground level. And the light is now here. And the light came when Governor Ige hired Kristen Johnson to come yeah, and be an oversight coordinator. Her relationships that she has established has put us on a direction where we need to go. Our website, and the things that she has done with her staff in the last 18 months will prove to you that she is deserving of what she's getting at this time. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. Rebecca Like or Like from the Prosecuting Attorney's Office on Kauai has submitted testimony in opposition. Uh, we have Kat Brady from the Community Alliance on Prisons. Good afternoon, Chair Wakai, Vice Chair Alafante, and Member Fukunaga. Kat Brady testifying on behalf of Community Alliance on Prisons. Oh, and Senator Rhodes. Hi. Um, <laughs> in 30 years, I really have never seen a bill like this that attacks one person. I'm appalled, but it is what it is. Oversight is absolutely crucial. And it isn't like being a department director. It is an independent agency that kind of helps, right now helps the correctional system identify problems that could be fixed before a lawsuit. So when they toured HCCC on the Big Island, they found that people were locked in their cells with padlocks. That is not only not a good practice. It is against the law. If there was a fire, people could have died. So this is the importance of having really good oversight with somebody who has lots of experience. We're getting a great deal with this woman. She brings decades of experience and she is kind. She has made relationships with all different agencies. She has, in 20 months, I've never seen anybody in state government do this much work. 
So please, we implore you to hold this bill. It's really bad. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Zoe Ryan might be joining us via Zoom. IT, do we have a Zoe Ryan? Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can cannot see you. Okay. Well, that's okay. I'll just uh, say what I want to say. Is that okay? Go ahead. Oh, wait, maybe I start my video. I see how it goes. Okay, there we go. Hi. Uh, I'm a first timer. Um, I strongly oppose this bill as well. My partner is incarcerated, so I have firsthand experience of walking into uh, the Saguaro prison environment almost every week for the last two years now. And if you guys saw what was going on there or were treated the way I have been treated, um, you would be right behind us all on this train. We need to oppose the bill, support Kristen Johnson in every way. She is the only person that actually called me back and made a difference in my husband's medical condition. Um, I believe uh, that he could have perished without help and we're still working on getting him what he needs. I had to fight for it, that's not fair. Um, so Kristen has been instrumental in me actually getting uh, medical help for my husband that he would not have otherwise received at Saguaro. You guys pay a lot of money for us to send everyone away. And anyway, there's a lot more to it. Uh, nobody's expecting prison to be a cushy environment, but it is, I believe, a common goal with all of us that we need to change it. If we eliminate the person who's helping us get Zoe, there, can you summarize, please. Yes, um, this is my this is my summary. It's from a, a movie called Boys in the Hood. Two men, a, 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 a father and his son, got pulled over by a police officer. The kids were black. The police officer came to the window and said, "Is something wrong?" And the dad said, "Yeah, it's just too bad you don't know what it is." Kristen is going to help us figure out what it is, so we can't eliminate her. Thank you, Zoe. Yeah. Uh, we have Al Olive, Alice Kahaleua might be joining us via Zoom. IT, is Alice there? No, unfortunately, she's not available on Zoom. Okay. And we have a uh, late testimony from Jennifer Brown, Hawaii Innocence Project, has submitted testimony in opposition. We also have uh, Carrie Ann Shirota from ACLU. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for joining us, Jennifer. Please uh, go ahead. Aloha, thank you to the committee for allowing me to testify. My name is Jennifer Brown. I'm a clinical faculty at the William S. Richardson School of Law, where I serve as the teaching instructor, associate director, and the supervising attorney of two of our legal clinics that do post-conviction work and advocacy, um, mm -hmm. Hawaii Innocence Project and Beyond Guilt uh, Legal Clinics. I'm testifying today in strong opposition of this bill that would reduce the salary of the Oversight Commission coordinator. We submit the testimony we support the testimony of others who also oppose this bill, and we oppose as well because the commission is so vital to our work where the vast majority of our clients are incarcerated out of state in Arizona. Passing this measure, measure would be a dangerous precedent to create a chilling effect, effectively allowing the legislature to reduce someone's salary, perhaps in whole or in part because they disagree with the Oversight Commission is shining a light on the deplorable conditions in our state jails and prisons. The coordinated position is critical and should be fully funded at the rate currently set. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, Carrie Ann Shirota, ACLU. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members, Carrie Ann Shirota on behalf of the ACL Hawaii. We strongly oppose this measure for a number of reasons. We just want to quickly highlight that our jails and prisons have had notorious conditions for decades and having the Oversight Commission to do its job, which is to promote transparency and accountability, can help us to avert DOJ involvement. The ACLU sent the letter to the Department of Justice some years ago, then the COVID happened. That letter can be resurrected any day and those conditions merit it. But we believe that with the Oversight Commission working together with community Department of Corrections, we can avert potentially federal intervention. But just quickly, I need to note that this appears to be a targeted attack on the oversight coordinator and the commission for doing its job. I also want to point out that this seems to be a contravention of other policies you've passed. Pay transparency last year. This job was advertised in statute at a certain amount. 
and then to come back a few years later to try to essentially demote a person. Second, this contravenes pay equity. There does not appear to be in the statute, this proposed statute, any legitimate non-discriminatory reason for this. And having been a past enforcement attorney for the Hawaii Civil Rights Commission and investigator for the federal government for HUD, again, what is the legitimate non-discriminatory reason for this? This does appear retaliatory and targeted to one person. And I respectfully ask that you defer this measure. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie Ann. Uh, members, I must have at least another 50 individuals um, who have indicated their opposition to this measure. Is there anyone else in the room or? Oh, Namiki? Namiki. Thank you, Chair Wakai, um, Vice um, Chair Elefante, and the committee members. Uh, my name is Noriko Namiki. I'm a resident of downtown Honolulu, and I'm here as a private individual to testify against uh, SB 3283. But in also uh, in the past 10 years, also in, um, in my professional life, uh, I've been the CEO of YWCA Oahu, and we have assisted many uh, women transitioning out of incarceration through different programs, like Work Crawler Program and also Dress with Success. Um, I oppose uh, this uh, bill because I don't know the intent of the bill, and I really would like to know more about that, why you know, this bill was created. Um, if the current coordinator is not meeting the expectations of the job description, um, um, I, I don't know. Or, or is, um, have there been any changes to the role of this, uh, responsibilities of this um, role? I'm not sure about that. And I would like to hear more about it. And if she's not meeting the expectations, I think um, then the state and the, um, and the coordinator deserve due process of fact finding and also improvement. So uh, for this reason, I would like to uh, oppose uh, this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman in the back. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm sorry, Kyle from Old Triple C. Um, I oppose this bill, and I was also part of part of some staff that were at the tail end of the consent decree that we were under. And from that point till today, it's just gone completely downhill. I've seen Christian Johnson walk into a triple C in one of the most dangerous places, comfortable, got support from staff and inmates that they believe that there will be change coming. Everybody is at wit's end on what's happening. And she was able to do that alone, walking into the floor with 150 inmates alone. I saw it for myself. I believe in her. We've had talks about us feeling like we need the feds to come back. That's how bad it is. No one's listening to us. We finally have a voice and an ear listening to us. And it seems pretty suspicious that all of a sudden she's doing her job and we're cutting her pay. It's very suspicious. Again, um, a lot of our staff couldn't come here because if you guys are aware of the shortage of staff. And I'm here speaking on behalf of OCCC. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Carlos. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing? Yes. Please join us. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. My name is Darrell Wilcox, and I'm also a UPW, the United Public Workers State President. I strongly oppose this bill. Um, just Kristen Johnson and her team, we need her to continue the work that she's already been, been doing. She connects with us. She connects with the inmate. She connects with a lot of the parties that you see here today and, and you've heard, so we need them to continue their work. She has a sense of dignity and pride in the things that she does, and we just need her to just keep on going. Like uh, my sergeant said before, there's a lot of stuff going on at the jail systems right now, whether the jails or the prisons, and we need all that information passed on to you guys so we can make critical um, decisions for the future of our jail systems and prison systems. So please, we strongly oppose this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Uh, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Chair, Vice Chair and members, my name is Chaz Williams. I'm the Executive Director and Founder of Working at Inc., a community-based offender service agency. I've been doing this work for 34 years. You actually interviewed me at one point uh, in your former career. 
Oh, it was a black and white TV and no that's, song. That's right. That was me. That was me. That was it. I'm here to express my entire complete opposition to this bill. Uh, in the 34 years I've been doing this work, I have never seen a clearer rejection of rehabilitation in my entire career. And I'd like to speak in behalf of Ms. Johnson, who has been a godsend for us in correcting the things that need to happen for this system to be able to work and effectively do what it's supposed to do. I am in total support of her and total opposition to this bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. There's someone else in this corner that wanted to testify. Oh. Um, my name is Carolyn Eaton. Do you want to join us, Carolyn? I submitted testimony a couple, excuse me. Aloha. 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 Um, I submitted testimony maybe Tuesday. Is there a too early? Uh, I, I have an indication of who would like to testify. So you might have provided written testimony, but maybe didn't indicate that you were going to be here in person. So feel free to share your thoughts. Well, I really wonder what became of all my hard work and written testimony. So I, I started out by saying that we were extremely glad when at the end of his term, Governor Ige approved the funding for getting a coordinator. We have her now. And it's like sticking your finger in something that doesn't need to be messed with. And um, please, I oppose this bill. And um, it does seem like really disrespectful. Carol, I did a quick survey. I don't see your written yeah, testimony, I looked, I looked but for it. we would be happy to down. include it in the records if you email it to us after this hearing. It disappears. I didn't write it out. Just, sorry, we, we have lots of other testimony, but I'm sorry we did not capture yours. Um, is there anyone else wishing to test testify on Senate Bill 3283? Members, any questions? Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Sorry, Carl, one more. That's fine. Aloha. Um, I'm, I'm testifying on behalf of Lauren Walker, um, Hawaii Friends of Restorative Justice. Um, mahalo for your work. Uh, initially, uh, the Hawaii Friends weren't uh, on board uh, supporting the, the commission, uh, but after seeing the excellent work they do, uh, uh, the, the organization is completely on board and committed to supporting the commission. And we strongly oppose um, Senate Bill 3283. Um, this bill would harm the potential for more positive changes that the Director of the Correctional Oversight Commission has advanced in making public and also offering solutions to serious problems with Hawaii's jails and prisons. We need this position to remain cabinet level and not deputy director position. Hawaii, need, Hawaii Can you needs. Summarize your thoughts. Sure. Hawaii needs the best um, uh, caliber of oversight possible. So please kill this bill and continue the good work of the coordinator of the oversight commission. Thank you. Uh, last call. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Yes. Uh, Chair, Vice Chair. My name is Tara Kampani. I work at the Oversight Commission also. My focus on the Oversight Commission's work is reentry and diversion. And I just wanted to briefly add two points today. Um, the salary of the oversight coordinator is commensurate with other oversight positions across the country have been in the field for over a decade, too. And when we look at positions of this caliber running organizations like this, um, the salary here in Hawaii is definitely commensurate. And then finally, just as someone who sees the work of the oversight coordinator every single day, this is, a, this is a big job in Hawaii in terms of what we're looking at in the system and the role that the coordinator plays. And so based on that, I also think that the salary uh, is appropriate and therefore strongly opposed to the bill also. Thank you. 
Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else wishing to testify? Uh, Senator Brooks. Thank you. Um, shows, just to, goes to show how bad a politician I am. I've met you more than once, but if this is Miss Johnson right here, right? Could you please come up? So uh, my recollection was that you had had a similar position in another state. Is that correct? Yes. Are, did you, are you making as much money now as you made in the other state? Um, I'm making more money now, but I wasn't uh, the director of the you office the in the other positions. Okay. What state did you, what state were you in previously? Um, I worked in two different jurisdictions in Michigan. I worked for the state of Michigan and the city of Grand Rapids, and I also worked for the city of New York. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I have another question for someone else, if that's okay. Brendan, did you have any uh, questions? No, I have a question for ACLU. Oh, go ahead. Okay, Sorry. yeah, so I, I'm ACLU, if you're still here, I think I see you back there. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. So, yes, as uh, representing an organization that's been known to sue people once in a while, um, <laughs> if, if the state of Hawaii were to abolish the, the Oversight Commission or to downgrade its importance, how, do, how does that play with people who uh, are consider who look at conditions in our prison system and say things aren't very good? Maybe we maybe we need to bring in a bring in federal oversight again. Well, first of all, I want to say that we do have a legal director, Wiki Kim. He's not here, but I'll just speak from a policy perspective. But but it's a fairly simple question. I mean, if if we abolish the if abolish or downgrade it, is that a is that a plus or a minus when you're looking at litigation? I would defer to our legal director who handles that, but I will say that it's my understanding that even in states that have oversight commissions, the idea behind the oversight commission is to point out problems and constitutional violations potential so that the department can remedy it. So they, don't, they, so they don't get sued. So they don't get sued. Okay. All right. That's fine. Thank it's you. Preventive. Thanks, Thank you. Oh, come on. Oh, sorry. Senator, Senator Lafonte. Sure. Sorry, Senator. I, I think Senator Rhodes encompassed my question. What maybe sorry. let me no, no, it's good that we're thinking alike in that sense. But let me ask it a little differently. Sure. Um, from ACLU's perspective, um, whether it's a reduction in salary or a you know, doing away with the commission, would that I, I would speculate that could lead to um, a federal consent decree with the DOJ overseeing our prisons. Is, would, would you speculate that could be accurate? That could be, that could be accurate. Yeah. Okay. I can just tell you in the past years ago when we did the litigation, it was then with ACLU National because we have a national prison project. And so different priorities, as you know, abortion is a particular issue. So sometimes they're shifting priority issues. We believe that there are unconstitutional violations. The letter that was written to the DOJ in 2016, much of that still continues. But the Oversight Commission is relatively new and we see that there's a positive trend. We actually see more transparency and accountability. And we think we're moving in the right direction. And so we wanna also give the commission an opportunity to do its work with the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. But if it continues and if, you, if, if this body decides to undo creating the commission, it makes us wonder why this was a specific recommendation from HCR 85, which was a task force, community members, experts. It makes us wonder like, why would we hold these task force with experts? They recommend oversight. And then a few years later, we'd remove it. And I just wanna point out from a budgetary perspective, it's one thing if we across the board were to reduce the salaries of certain individuals, but this is just targeting one person. And when I did the math, what the depart what the correctional, the oversight commission is requesting, their entire budget is less than 500,000 with an investigator position. It's less than 0.001% of the Department of Corrections budget, less than 0.001. And so this is an investment that actually will likely save us money. It's painful to hear about the reports, but it's the reality. Yeah. So let's work together Thank you. to make it better for our whole community. Thank you, Senators. Thank you. Any further questions? If not, we're gonna take a brief recess prior to taking the vote.
Thank you for your patience. We're reconvening the Committee on Public Safety, Intergovernmental and Military Affairs for decision-making on our 301 agenda. The first measure on this agenda is Senate Bill 2512, relating to emergency management powers. Uh, members, I'd like to pass this measure out with technical non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? If not, Senator Elefanti, I vote yes. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2512 with amendments. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Fukunaga, aye. Senator Rhodes, aye. Senator Awa. Aye. Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. On Senate Bill 2781, relating to disaster services, we heard from a multitude of folks that uh, we feel that we have the beauty of Hawaii is because of our ethnic diversity, but sometimes that ethnic diversity means they speak different languages and in cases of emergency, I think it's really a state responsibility to, as best we can, uh, be able to help our friends who don't speak English. So we'd like to support this measure and have uh, it passed with a defective date of January 1st, 2042. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Elefante, I vote yes. Take charge recommendations to pass SB 2781 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations. Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. Members on Senate Bill 2808 relating to statewide fire helicopters. Uh, I'd like to include fixed wing aircrafts, uh, but the title doesn't fit. So if you could indulge me, we're gonna defer action on this measure. And I'm going to go find a short form bill and put helicopters, fixed wing, and uh, drones or whatever that could be helpful in helping with in fires and uh, put that in another bill. So we're going to defer action on this for the moment. Uh, for Senate Bill 2924 relating to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, I'd like to pass this measure out with uh, a defective date. So amended to take effect in January 1st, 2042. Members of the discussion? If not, Senator Elefante, I vote yes. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2924 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations. Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. On Senate Bill 3041 relating to law enforcement, I'd like to pass this measure out with amendments. And amendments would be specifically to take into account the ACLU and the police project's uh, suggestion to remove the exemption provision, uh, which makes the bill far too, too broad and also insert technical non-substantive amendments. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Elefanti, I vote yes. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3041 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. We're going to move on to Senate Bill 3068, making appropriations for wildlife, wildlife recovery. Wildlife wildfire. 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 Sorry, it's wildlife on here. Wildfire <laughs> recovery. Um, this this sets up a, a just a mechanism so that the budget and finance has a account to help our friends on, on Maui. So I'd like to pass this measure uh, with uh, amendments to and the amendments actually BNF offered us uh, revamped an entirely different. Uh, measure which uh, we've gone through and would like to use BNF's amendments for Senate Bill 3068. There's any discussion? If not, Senator Elefante, I vote yes. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3068 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. On Senate Bill 3072 relating to emergency management, uh, they could pass this measure out. Again, it helps the governor in his response to the wildfires on Maui. Uh, but pass this out with technical non-substantive amendments. Any discussion? Not Senator Lafonte, I vote yes. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3072 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. On Senate Bill 3085 relating to the Hawaii National Guard, um, would like to pass this measure out with technical non-substantive amendments. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Elefante, I vote yes. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3085 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. On Senate Bill 3096 relating to wildfire risk mitigation, and this is a very important bill for the future of HECO. They need to be able to get financing at a rate that us as ratepayers can benefit from. 
But uh, we have AGs, we have DCCA, we have PUC, we have Un Polo, we have Hico, we have Kauai Utility Cooperative. Um, and I'm trying to mesh all of these various interest groups to make a good solid bill that will help make sure that Hico is around for decades, if not centuries, to, to come. So members, if you could allow me to uh, offer you an amended bill, and we come back on Valentine's Day for this lovely bill at three o'clock. So I ask that we could defer this measure for the moment. On Senate Bill 3198, relating to Civil Air Patrol, um, would like to take the suggested amendments in the testimony from the uh, Hawaii Wing of the Civil Air Patrol and uh, pass it out with those stated amendments. Any discussion? If not, Senator Elephant, I vote yes. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3198 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations. Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. On Senate Bill 3059, relating to tort liability, I'd like to pass this measure out with technical non substantive amendments. Members, any discussion? If not, Senator Elefante, I vote yes. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 3259 with amendments of the five members present. Any no votes? Any votes with reservations? Reservations. Voting the reservations for Senator Rhodes. Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. And on Senate Bill 3283 relating to the Hawaii Correctional Systems Oversight Commission, the only thing good that came out of this bill is that uh, we see that Kristen Johnson has a lot of fans. So <laughs> I will defer this bill. Any, uh, so with that said, we are done.